Hello everybody and welcome back to Hogwarts Legacy. Hope you're all doing well. I can speak to the portrait Professor Neon Fitzgerald in the chat. Oh my god, we had some side quests pop up, didn't we, at the end of the last video and I did say I was going to check them out first. So we've got a surprise meeting. Oh, meet Pompey in the pin, but okay, I want to do that. Natty, okay, we'll do that one first. I like those missions. And then I want to go and speak to Natty because we haven't actually done much with her yet and I want to do a lot more because she's one of the main um, companions we get on this. Okay, top map. Now we'll track that. But I've enjoyed doing the quest with Poppy because it's all about helping the beasts. Meet Poppy in the Forbidden Forest. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. Can we go through here? We can, can't we? Yeah. Why should not let me out? Let me out! Do 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 is there someone to talk to right above here? Oh, there's someone right there. Let's go pick that quest up. If he thinks he's getting away with this, he has another thing coming. Oh, okay. Pardon me. Is everything all right? No. No, it's not. We only had two bells to go. But she just had to go and spoil things. I'm afraid I don't follow who spoiled things. Was it what bells? <sighs> Professor Black ordered Mr. Moon to take down the bells in the bell tower. Said they were giving him a headache. Those bells are a part of Hogwarts. I wasn't about to let that happen. So I asked my friend Adelaide to help me put them back. We've always been a duo of sorts, Adelaide and Evangeline. Addie and Evie. Anyway. It was going swimmingly until Black started asking questions. Then she wasn't comfortable with our rule breaking. Now I'm stuck. Unable to tell which bell goes where. Okay. Why can't you put the bells up yourself? If only two bells are left, isn't it fairly easy to tell which goes where? Easy for you, perhaps. I happen to be tone deaf. Mother likes to say I couldn't carry a tune if it hopped on my back like a chocolate frog. No point putting them back in if they don't sound just as they did before, for the sake of historical accuracy. Okay, fair enough. It's certainly an odd decree, even for Black, taking down the bells for a headache. I agree. I thought it might also have been that they interrupted his hourly naps. That's all he does in his office, you know. But then I heard... Can you keep a secret? I can. I heard from Alice, who heard from Ollie, who heard from Eugenia, that it's because the bells reminded him of his wedding day breaks out in a sweat every hour on the hour but mum's the word is it really that important that the bells go back up is it really that important they're part of the school's history those bells likely told a young merlin that he was running late to charms or called ignatia wildsmith to dinner we can't simply fiddle with history we're meant to be its stewards I'm talking about like past um, members of the school. I wish we could go even further back. Like Hogwarts Legacy, you could do a Hogwarts Legacy too, because you could easily have another game set after this one. But you could e easily have one set before this, way back. Because there's so many interesting characters in this um, game and in the lore and whatnot. It's really, I really wish they'd. I, well, hope they explore more anyway. Okay, let's continue. Perhaps I could help put the bells back up. Really? Oh, that would be wonderful. The bells are in the bell tower, just above the music room. You're certainly of more help than Adelaide. Meet Poppy in the Forbidden Forest. I'm going to continue doing that. Always well the end. Imagine we're... the bells are just inside in the bell tower. Okay, it's, it's automatically sending me to the music room, so we'll go into that. Ah, oh, get the Christmas tree. We're getting close to Christmas. Well, in the game we are. In the game we are. Though, in reality, it is getting close again, isn't it? 
save my uncle's life. Who's that? I just heard somebody talk then. Okay. Yeah, it's... It's a strange year. It's going rather quick. So I am looking forward to autumn. I really do like autumn as a season. And we're all, it also means we get close to... We're getting closer to my um, charity streams that I do. So if you guys like Disney and like Disney games, that's basically what I do. I am going to be doing the Universal Studios playthrough as well. Some there. Find the terror bells. Ah, found them. I'll have to get those up there somehow. In Guardian Leviosa, perhaps. Where are the missing ones? These ones, okay. Uh, okay. Let me answer. Big one there, don't you? So, where's the one, the big one? It's not that way, it's going to be somewhere else. Did I run past it? Hello, Hamora. <coughs> okay, so To it. I wonder what we're going to get from this. Oh, my gear slots are full. Okay. Are there any other bells? Revelio. Oh, yeah, there's a Revelio. Yeah, let's, let's get this. Field guide. Here perch the slimy yet symphonic frogs that comprise the Hogwarts Frog Choir. These magical amphibians can sing in six bar harmony and hold a pitch better than most humans. Okay. Oh. Have we got some in here? Oh, okay, hang on. Revelio. No, I need this one, don't I? Because I need that. Gotcha, and I got 500, thank you. Revelio. Where's the... I wonder where the other bell is. There's another bell missing it there. Where is it?
We got one missing. Where's this other bell then? Oh, there it is. Bloody thing. Leviosa, Accio, Wingardium Leviosa. Revelio. Have we just dropped it down there? Oh, you are joking. He's gone all the way down to the bottom. Oh, no. Oh, my God. It's all the way down there. Accio. Let me also. Oh my god. This is an absolute disaster, isn't it? Accio! Wingardium Leviosa! Accio! Wingardium Leviosa! Come on, bing bong. Black's gonna go absolutely mad, isn't he? Am I stuck on a chair? Come on, dude. Oh, you are joking. I'm stuck in a chair. Okay, can I fast travel? Just because we're stuck in between a chair. It's absolutely crazy. Um, can I fast travel there? Yeah, let's travel here. As if, I'm, as if I'm having to do this just because we got trapped between... Oh, so some games do this to you where you get stuck behind like a random item. It's quite funny. It can be frustrating, but it is funny. Will always look upon you. Okay, I've got to go and do a quest at some point as well, but I'm going to do return to Evangeline first.
Oh, that is so cool. Look at that. That's really nice, isn't it? They can fight. <laughs> that other suit of armor is such a grump. Oh, it looks really pretty in here. It's really, really pretty. I like that. That young'un's now a teacher herself. It's a wonder she's not gobbled up by her own fanged geranium. Hogwarts looks really cool with the Christmas decorations. She loved on. taking them down. The bells are back up, Evangeline. Oh, you're a credit to the school. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait for the headmaster to hear them. I wish I could see his face. Future generations may not truly appreciate what you've done, but I do. And I hope that you do as well. You don't know how much this means for me and for Hogwarts. Well, it was rather simple, really. You just had to put them in like, order of size. Okay, another quest. Quests, we are going to do... Oh, we've got these two. Surprise meeting or basis for Black Mouse. We'll go this one. This is what we were doing before I stopped to do that quest. Like, if I ever see people talking, I will go and see what they're doing. Just because it could be another quest. Is somebody down here or somebody above us? I'm not sure. Is that person? They've disappeared, which means they're upstairs. I like to go and um, get those missions because you never know. Yeah, it's up there. Okay. Am I going to find them? Are they in there? I don't know where they are. Are they upstairs? Or are they across the... Oh, this is the problem with this school. It's so bloody big. Oh my life, it's so big, big. Okay, it's not somebody. It's somebody up there, isn't it? It's got to be someone up there. How do I get up there? It's not this side, so it's that section there. Okay, it's not. Okay, so maybe it's one more level up. I need one more staircase then, maybe. Okay, maybe it's this way. It's got to be one more level up then. It's got to be up there. Rebellion. There's got to be somebody up there. Are there any other staircases? Because I cannot see one round here. Is there one in here? No, it's not there. That's a classroom. Where the heck could he... This is strange, isn't it? I don't think it's anybody below us either. Oh, I haven't been in here before. One gone. Mm. Honestly, I don't. Okay, we're going to meet Poppy because I have no idea where that one is. Oh, God, there's more stairs here. Could it be up here? I'm 
going, we're going up even more. We're going up even higher. Could it be somebody up here? Any people to, um, to, unless it's a different person we're going to be finding then I don't know who that one is but okay, that doesn't need anywhere is it you oh, it's you yeah professor do you have a moment I do why an interest in astronomy may I ask what attracted you to astronomy you may might I assume from your inquiry that you wonder how anyone may have an interest in astronomy? Not at all. I find it fascinating. <laughs> oh, not at all, Professor. I find it intriguing and wanted to know more about your work. Ah, that is good to hear. So often those who do not fully understand all that can be gleaned from the stars question astronomy's relevance. Misperceptions frequently arise due to the confusion of astronomy with astrology, the ridiculousness of which I shall not deign to discuss. To answer your question, it was my dear sister who first sparked my interest in stargazing. The two of us spent countless nights on our rooftop staring at the cosmos. It was one of the only subjects we could study together. I'm not sure I follow, Professor. Why was that? My sister is a squib. Clever, hardworking, and generous, but a squib nonetheless. The only non-magical child born to our family in generations, poor thing. Although she manages exceptionally well. How unfortunate. Uh, now we'll put she's in it, lovely. It sounds as if she's a lovely person, and accomplished. She is. And to her credit, while she was once disappointed not to attend Hogwarts, she has excelled in Muggle school. One of the first women, we suspect, to have attended Cambridge, well disguised at the time by our mother as a gentleman scholar. And as astronomy is one subject shared between the Muggle world and ours, she and I have been able to maintain that common interest. We still sneak up to a rooftop now and then to gaze upwards, courtesy of a levitation charm rather than a trellis nowadays. Thank you for telling me about your sister, Professor. I was glad to. It is good to be reminded of all that one can accomplish when one embraces who one is. Now off you go. I am sure you've a star chart to review somewhere. Not really, but... Okay, well, we found out who we had to talk to. It was it wasn't a mission, but it was good law. Found out more about the, one of the teachers. But we also, we did find out a little bit about them before because we found a letter. Yeah, in the last, last, in the last video, we found a letter. And it was definitely those two they were talking about. The stars, so that's pretty cool. It's Professor Black. I want to find out about him more. Is he really as bad as I think he is? Or is he just misunderstood? Oh, now we've got to go down the stairs. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Thank you. I wonder if this quest is going to be better than the last one we did with Poppy. 
because every well so far every quiz every quest we've done with this girl has been interesting and we found like a different animal and it's led to us being able to do actually it's learned it's actually led to us doing a lot more than i've been able to do with say sebastian sebastian i've just learned dark magic where what's the dark magic has dark magic hasn't really led me anywhere with side quests as such it's helping me with the main story obviously because it's it's going hand in hand with sebastian and what we're dealing with but with poppies it's giving us like a whole new um a side quest but like something else to do breeding animals being able to look after them like farming it's it's, it's really cool i really like it. it's like i'm hoping to go back and to do things more with the plants and that i'm not sure if they're going to do that but i'm hoping we eventually steer towards doing more with the gardening and the herbology is it Cause it's good learning some of the new lessons and i think there's more less more i think there are a few more lessons we haven't learned yet and we haven't been to like that music one we haven't been to any of those yet but yeah i want to go back to the greenhouses Handy resource indeed, your field guide. I'm most pleased to be here. I keep forgetting that that was fast travel points actually speak to you. Yeah, it's way quicker than travelling by foot. I'm hoping we can get a mount on the ground as well. I don't think Poppy's going to be here at night. I'd be very surprised if she does. Like we tend to be like one of the only students that travels around at night. Everyone else seems to be in their dormitories. Right, do 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 Oh god Equip gear you purchase or grad alone to improve your combat efficiency. Yeah, I need to get back there at some point. Oh, she's here. Blimey me neck, okay. Oh wow, she's been waiting for me. Sorry. I can do this. I can do this. They will want to help. Oh, Poppy. Poor kid. Is this where we're meeting the centaurs? Well, they don't exactly know we're coming, so it's less of a meeting and more of a surprise. What? I suppose. Oh, okay. I don't think they'll like this. I'm not sure about this. I can't imagine they're fond of being surprised. We don't have a choice if we want to help the Snidgets. Perhaps they'll be able to tell that we're sincere. There's something about them that's so knowing. It's almost unnerving. Are they known for being wise? I'm not sure. OK, we'll just put that. I suppose they are known for having an air of omniscience. That's exactly the right word. I just... never mind. What is it? It's nothing, truly. I've... We've no secrets to hide. That's right. We'll simply be honest with them about what we're trying to do. They'll have to help us, won't they? Yes, of course. You're absolutely right. What's she hiding? We'll meet with them, tell them about the Snidgets, and I'm sure to all be fu- Oh, God. What do you think you're doing here, humans? Please! We were hoping to speak with you. Ah, 
I suppose you'd like a tale for your friends of the time you spoke to a centaur, and it spoke back. No, never. We're here because we need your help. Enough! You made a grave error in judgment in coming here, little witch. What? Leave them be, Alec. We do not harm the young. It is not our way. You forget your place, old fool. I'm the leader of this herd, and while you cling to our way, their kind continues to slaughter beasts like us without a care! From what I can see, they have slaughtered no one. They will leave here unharmed. Oh. Mark my words, Doran. If I ever see them again, it will be all three of your heads. <laughs> So we're not going to get the centaur's help. Foolish children. Do you know what happens to wizards who wander here? Now. Follow me before Golden I... Golden Sidgets are still alive and the poachers are after them. They know that the key to finding them lies in the moonlight, but they don't know what that means yet. Please help us find the Sidgets before the poachers do. Could it be? In the south, there is a cave within which lies what the poachers seek. A moonstone. Retrieve it and place it in the henge in the forest. I, on the other hand, must go speak with the herd. Find me after you have done this. Hopefully the herd will listen to him. I don't understand. So the moonlight mentioned in the journal doesn't refer to actual moonlight, but to a moonstone. What do moonstones have to do with snidgets? And why was he so certain about where we could find one? Is it moonstone common? It was annoyingly cryptic. I trust it. Okay, we'll go with this. Is it moonstone common? Isn't moonstone all around us? Why retrieve one from a cave? Knowing centaurs, I suspect he's referring to a specific moonstone. We'll likely know it when we see it. I don't know, but I am inclined to believe him, what with his being a centaur and all. I am too. It is a shame how quickly he left. What was his name? Doran. That's what the leader of the herd called him. Well, if Doran knows something we don't, I'd rather act now and ask questions later. I can head to the library and start looking into the cave you mentioned. Okay, so we have to I'll wait for her then. I find. Okay, we'll wait for her to tell us. Uh, right now, I'm going to carry on with another quest. So we'll probably finish that one in the next quest. Find the location of the third to keep a trial. I'm not doing that yet. I'm going to go and sp find Natty. Okay, we've got to go and speak to Natty. Be careful, Poppy. We'll see you in a bit. Looked rather dark in there. Never stopped me before. No, it doesn't. That's why I'm going to go speak to Natty now, and we're going to go and do another quest for her. I'll have to wait for her. She's not going to come out at night, is she? Alright, I'll so switch to daytime now. There we go. I'm ready to do what's needed to take Harlow down. I know you have a plan. We must gather information from the friends of Mr. Bicker. 
that Archie and Mrs. Bickle mentioned. Agabus Filbert, Otto Dibble, and Mr. and Mrs. Webb. All right. I suggest that you speak with each of them while I head to the Hogshead. I saw some Ashwinders heading there. And as my mother would never go near the Hogshead, she is less likely to learn of my activities than if I were to wander the village questioning its residents. Okay, well, I'm hoping to learn from them. Where can I find them? Okay, but this one. What sort of information am I trying to gather from these people? They may know what evidence Mr. Bickle had against Harlow, or they may have evidence of their own. We simply need to know whatever they know. Where am I to find these friends of his? I do not know about Mr. Rabe, but his wife, Daisy, is often in Hogsmeade, as is Agabus Filbert. And Otto Dibble, he works at Gladrags, so you will likely find him there. Very well. I'll speak with them, see what I can learn. I knew I could rely on you. Of course you, you can, Natty. they are being blackmailed by Rookwood and Harlow. Meet me here after you have spoken with them. Right. Hopefully by the time you return, I will be able to move a bit more freely. Yeah, you be careful. Make sure your mum doesn't see you. If she sees you, it's game over. We won't be able to do any more. Okay, so we've got two people there. One person down there. I'll go to these two first. There's one right in here. Somebody upstairs. Okay. Mrs. Rabe should be nearby. Oh, Isco, what have I done? Mrs. Rabe, I wondered if I might speak with you about Theophilus Harlow. I'm a friend of the Bickles and I'm trying to gather evidence against him. Poor Joanna and little Archie. And now Harlow has taken my darling Isco. What do you mean? Why? <laughs> I'm a security guard at Gringotts, and my husband is a curse breaker for them. Harlow approached me about helping him extort my colleagues into giving him treasures from the vaults. And you declined? Of course I declined. Repeatedly. I thought they'd given up until I came home one night and found my husband gone and a note affixed to my door with a knife. The note stated that I only had a few days to reconsider helping with some banking needs and that my husband would appreciate it if I acted quickly. But the help Harlow wants is help that I cannot give. And my dearest Isco is paying the price. Okay, does that not confirm kidnapping? Are you sure the note means that your husband was kidnapped? What else could it possibly mean? Besides, I came home to find that someone had trampled the daisies in our garden. It may sound silly, but those were Isco's pride and joy. He would never have let that happen. Have you helped Harlow since your husband was taken? No. I'm worried sick about Isco, but he'd never want me to compromise my integrity. I also know that he's extremely clever. That said, I was hoping he would have escaped by now. It makes me concerned as to why he hasn't. Why wouldn't Harlow extort your husband? Isco's job is even more removed from the vaults than mine. He travels the world for the bank. He could do nothing for Harlow. I'm the one in the bank on a daily basis, which evidently makes me an enticing target for blackmail. Thank you, Mrs. Rabe. Knowing the lengths that Harlow will go to is helpful, albeit more than disturbing. Mr. Bickle was trying to help us, but now he's gone. I don't know what to do. I shall do all I can to get evidence against Harlow, Mrs. Rabe. Very well. Here's the note I received. You must be careful as well. Please don't put yourself in danger. Oh, don't worry about us. We're all right. Okay, Mrs. Rabe, we do hope you will reconsider helping us with our banking needs. We're giving you ample time to reach a decision on your own, but we are beginning to lose our patience. We know your husband would appreciate it if you were to see the value in our working together. Shall we expect a response by week's end? Best to keep this between us, if you understand our meaning. Some evidence worth hanging on to. Thank you. Oh, I hope it's not too late. Now, we'll see. find Mr. Bickle's other two friends. What a horrible man. Well, 
not just horrible man. Horrible. What's a horrible group? Glad rags. I should check there. Uh, but, but, but please tell me you didn't take it. But perhaps it's been here all along. Mr. Dibble, may I speak with you? It's about Theophilus Harlow. I have nothing to say about him. Uh, may I interest you in a stunning cravat today? Please, sir. I'd like to help. I spoke to Mrs. Bickle. <laughs> you know the Bickles? Mm, all right. But we must be discreet. Can't have Mr. Hill hearing this. I know Mr. Hill. He was kind to me the day of the troll attack. Oh, he's a good man. But even he wouldn't understand about Harlow. It started a few weeks ago. I was distracted, reading a note, when you know who came into the shop. I had the note behind the counter and offered to help him. He stared at me for a moment, then asked me to check on an order he'd placed. I went into the storeroom to check on what turned out to be a non-existent order. When I returned, he was holding the note. What was in the note? It was a note from Rosie Hill, Mr. Hill's daughter. You see, we've been, well, secretly engaged these past six months. We haven't told Mr. Hill yet. I dare say he has higher hopes for her. Harlow advised me in no uncertain terms that my relationship with Rosie, not to mention my employment here, depended upon my cooperation. What does he ask you to do? It all happened so quickly. In an instant, he took a very expensive scarf from the counter, pocketed it, and smiled. He said, your secret is safe as long as I can supply my lady friend with delightful items like this every so often. I've been able to cover for his requests until now with some creative bookkeeping, but I can't keep it out for much longer. I'm terrified to say anything. I could never live without Rosie. I met Mr. Hill the day of the troll attack. He was kind to me. Why don't you just tell him? He's a lovely man. But when it comes to Rosie, I fear he loses all perspective. He'd see this as a grave betrayal. I'd lose my job instantly, and Rosie as well. What have you been doing to keep the extortion a secret? Well, as I mentioned, creative bookkeeping. And I've also been trying to cover the costs with my own savings, but I'm running out of money. Of course, none of this bodes well for my efforts to improve my circumstances and to be worthy of Rosie. Could you give me a bit more detail about the note? That might help me to identify it, should I come across it. It's on Rosie's special pink stationery. It has her monogram at the top, R.H. That's how Mr. Hill would know it was real. Thank you for telling me. I'm gathering evidence to take Harlow down. I would love nothing more than to see him rotting in Azkaban, but be careful. He's an awful man and incredibly dangerous. As for Rosie's letter, should you happen upon it, I have committed it to memory. You may destroy it immediately. Understood. Now so hurry off more. before Mr. Hill returns. Hmm. We're on the right track. Now to find the last of Mr. Bickle's friends. Agabus Filbert must be around here somewhere. Hello there. Excuse me, Mr. Filbert. I wondered if I might speak with you about your dealings with Theophilus Harlow. I hope to ease Mrs. Bickle's mind by gathering evidence against him. Oh, tragic what happened to Bickle. He wanted me to speak out against Harlow for an act of violence committed against me. But I feared Harlow's retaliation. And so I refused. So I've spoken out. If you had spoken out against him, as Mr. Bickle asked, perhaps Harlow would be locked away by now. Perhaps. But... <sighs> perhaps I would have suffered a similar fate. You said that Harlow committed an act of violence against you. Could you tell me what happened? Before my extraordinary wife, Dulcibella, passed away, she had just completed a small book of poetry. As a surprise for her birthday, one she never had the chance to celebrate, 
I had the book beautifully bound and plated in gold. One day, Harlow came calling to punish me for having spoken out against the Neanderthals that comprise Brookwood's lot. Before I knew it, I'd been petrified, and Harlow was rifling through my home. He found the book of poetry with its exquisite gold plating. I watched helplessly, lying there in my entranceway as he walked away with the book, laughing as he went. I was shaken to my core. Still am, to be honest. I imagine you fear Harlow retaliating again. But do you mind if I share this information with Officer Singer? <sighs> I suppose I have no choice. This extortion can't go on forever. You can pass it on to anyone who may be willing to help. Okay. Harlow does not like people talking, as you already know. I've spoken with Mr. Bickle's friend. Now to find Natty. Oh. Oh, it's really cool, even this is decorated for Christmas. Really cool looking. We can speak to Natty, see what she has to say about all this. And then we'll finish the video there. Oh, she's not, not here. Natty to be late. She said she was going to the Hog's Head. Perhaps I'll find her there. Oh, she's going to be in trouble, isn't she? The Hog's Head. She said there was ash winders there. There's bad people, yeah, it's Harlow's um, people went there, didn't they? Oh, she's going to be in trouble, or she's going to be kidnapped. That he must be around here somewhere. Side. Natty's wand. Oh no. She can cast without it. She wanted me to find this. She's in trouble. Ravelio will show me where she was taken. There's a bloody cave round here, is there? Matthew must have been taken this way. I That's why the hide out. Oh, great. Bloody ash winders. Footprints led to this room. There must be another way forward. Akio! Maybe. It's... Clever. Matthew must have been taken this way. I need to find her quickly. I'll collect the money while I can. I haven't really got long. I'd better be sure I'm not seen. Let's have a look. That is over there. Oh, 
I might finish this one here guys and the next one will continue on from this mission so I'm nearly finished right yeah let's get back to the top cipher up there right, I'm gonna finish this one here guys in the next one we are gonna do this mission we're gonna save Natty and we'll continue on from there so I've got to find Philbert's book of poems in here and Otto Dibble's love letter in here. So guys, thank you all for watching and until next time, take care.